For something so necessary to even the most casual of artists, reference sheets seem to be easy to produce but deceptively hard to master. What may prove adequate reference material in one situation won't exactly translate well into another. When it comes down to it, is it clever practice to make reference sheets specifically for plushie commissions? Let's find out. It goes without saying that reference sheets are indispensable to any artist. From 2D creators all the way up to artisan crafters, reference sheets allow one to lay out the basics of their characters without the strict guidelines of an industry model sheet. Doing this gives an artist wiggle room when fulfilling a client's commission, while still allowing them to keep the character recognizable in their personal style. Reference sheets come in all shapes and sizes, from the simplest two-view reference to sheets displaying every accessory, detail, and personality trait in a single image. But when working with those in the plushie industry, should one sacrifice form to function? Before creating your sheet, consider, who are you commissioning? Every plushie creator has their own personal style, which should be taken into account when creating a reference for them to utilize during the commission process. While researching creators is another topic within itself, there are a few popular options, at least when it comes to patronizing companies. The most obvious choice, of course, is Budsies. While this company specializes in bringing children's drawings to life, they do have a recently implemented character commission service. This is geared toward the furry and original character creator demographic. When creating reference material for this company, it's good to take into account their simplified style and tendency to copy references rather than stylizing your character for themselves. This means that any reference made will be taken very literally, down to the style it was drawn in. While this initially sounds like a good thing, it means that any flaws in the art will also be emulated. Cuddle Clones produces higher quality work, though the price tag reflects this. Any reference given to them will be translated into a more realistic, anatomically correct style. This should be considered when giving them your reference. Expecting a carbon copy of your work would be rather silly, as this is a company that should only be bought from if the commissioner would like to see their character stylized rather than copied. Of course, when all else fails, there's always freelance artists. I highly recommend at least considering these artists when researching your options, as they often offer a more personalized commission process, better communication, and can deliver work that is just as clean as mass-manufactured plushies. Of course, this also demands a higher price tag, which should be expected when patronizing standalone artists. The good thing about artists like these is that they often have their own distinct style, and are able to translate most characters into it without a specific plush reference. Unless you have something specific in mind, one can often feel comfortable handing them a basic sheet to refer to. So, what are the rules of thumb to follow when creating a reference sheet specifically for use by plush makers? Well, let's find out by translating my character, Lemon, into a style that would allow the person I'm commissioning to easier create her as a plushie. For one, simplifying your character design is key. This is especially true for the body shape. Most handmade artists will have no problem making an accurate plush with normal, humanized proportions, but we'd probably be better off simplifying Lemon down to a more chibi style if commissioning Budsies. Researching commercially made plushies is especially good for gauging what's realistic when making a plush. I highly recommend checking out limited to Neopet plushies or official and knockoff Pokemon plushies, as they give a good feel for what body shapes are possible for more advanced plush makers. Let's take a look at Lemon. What shapes are the most obvious on her? Well, her head and stomach are both circles. Her limbs are chunky and resemble cylinders more than they do rectangles, so when we translate that over to a more cartoony style, we're going to build on those shapes before fleshing anything else out. This means that when we line and begin to render her, she'll still have those strong, core shapes that identify her as a character, while still keeping her simple and easy to translate into a plush form. Speaking of shapes, let's take a step back. Is this something that looks like it could realistically exist in real life? 
If we wanted our plushie to stand up, maybe we'd have to scale down her head a bit, or make her tail larger so that she could lean back on it. These are all very important things to take into account, especially if your character has a predetermined body type that you don't want to be interpreted wrong. It's always good to mark down important proportions like body weight or leg thickness, as companies like Budsies tend to create their plushies on the thinner side, as shown here. Not every plush maker will be able to create every spot, stripe, piece of armor, or detail on your character. While most makers will often do the simplifying themselves, doing it beforehand will allow you to control which details are omitted and which aren't. For example, Lemon has a few traits that are difficult for makers to emulate unless they're using an airbrush. While someone like, say, Nazgoreng would be able to create all these details with ease, let's say we're commissioning someone in a lower price range, with less skill to reflect this. For one, we'd have to cut down the amount of spots on her body, as they are tedious and hard to sew in one by one. The gradient on her gills would also have to be changed in favor for one color, as finding the fabric to match this would be difficult. But let's say there's a certain trait that can't be simplified so drastically. Take Lemon's tail, for example. The amount of spots it has is a grounding trait for her, but may not be perfectly emulated by the artist we're commissioning. So, instead, we'd have to size up the spots, spread them apart, and label the reference accordingly to let the artist know that this is something we want to see on the finished product. When creating a reference sheet of any kind, I strongly suggest drawing multiple views of your character to aid whoever you're commissioning. It may be easy to overlook the back or sides of your character, especially if creating a reference sheet for drawn commissions, but when your character is being created in a 3D space, the usually unseen areas of their design need to be taken into consideration. At the very least, I recommend a minimum of two views, a front view and either a side or back view depending on whether or not your character has any markings hidden from the front. For a character like Lemon, I would have to supply both the front back and side view because she has markings that can only be seen from those certain angles as shown here. If your character is asymmetrical, make sure to note this on your reference. It's easy for someone to assume your character's markings are mirrored, just like Lemon's here. If needed, you can also supply close-up views on certain details of your character, such as their clothing or certain body parts. Let's say I want Lemon's eyes to come out a very specific way. To ensure that the artist gets this right, I would have to draw a close-up of her eyes and label what I want them to capture the most. Here, it would be her heart-shaped pupils. When creating a reference sheet like this, we need to realize that the colors we use will have to be paired with the appropriate fabric for the plush you're commissioning. For example, Lemon's gills wouldn't translate well into a plush due to the gradient on their base and the complicated rainbow pattern on the gills themselves. While we could trust our plush maker to pair up the fabric colors themselves, we could also do our own research to avoid any miscommunication. It never hurts to do this, and I highly recommend going to a local fabric shop or researching types of fabric if you're making a big investment with a freelance artist. Most plushes are often made of minky or faux fur. Websites like fabric.com will allow you to purchase small swatches of any one fabric allowing you to get a hands-on idea of what the end result of your plush will look like. Some fabrics come in patterns that could be rather useful in certain craft projects. This is especially true for faux fur, as shown by some of these varieties. I recommend thinking out of the box when selecting fabrics, as some of them have applications that aren't apparent at first glance. For example, Lemon's tail fin is see-through, so we'd have to opt for a fabric that wasn't opaque. After some research, I settled on pink tulle, which I'm going to add a swatch of to my reference. Do keep in mind that most companies like Budsies will only use the fabrics they have on hand, though you can certainly try to aid the process along by requesting swatches for you to choose from. Remember that this isn't a guarantee though, and if colors are really that important to you, I highly recommend purchasing the preview option for your plush. Well, it looks like our reference sheet is just about done. Now all we need to do is format it. How, you may ask? Remember, a reference sheet needs to be easily read by someone who isn't you. This means that a cluttered, messy reference sheet isn't what we're going to be producing here. A clearly labeled, legible, well-structured reference will leave little space for misinterpretation. For a plush reference, you're going to want to label everything you possibly would need to. For example, 
I'm going to label that Lemon's tail should make up a good portion of her body length, and that it could possibly be weighed down with beanbag pellets. Paint.net is a great program for adding text into your drawings, as it supports layers and is a free program. Make sure to use a simple font, include color swatches, and keep your reference simple, clean, and legible. Well, that's about it. Of course, there are so many factors to consider when creating a plush, which you should take into account when making your reference. A poor, bare-bones sheet will leave more room for error, and a shaded character image can often produce inaccurate colors. When compared side by side with my original reference material, you can see that the plush reference is much more specialized and readable for someone that's creating my character in a 3D space. While this only touches the tip of the iceberg of making reference sheets, I hope it was a useful exploration in starting your commission process with either a company or a freelance artist. Remember, this isn't a set of rules, but rather some guidelines I recommend following to avoid miscommunication. In any case, seeing your character created as a plush is something to be excited about, especially when it's your art being used to bring them to life. Feel free to leave a comment below if you ever commissioned a plushie of your character or plan on doing so in the future. I'd love to hear your own input on the matter, especially if you weren't pleased with the outcome or feel like some of my advice isn't justified. I can't wait to hear your feedback and possibly explore this topic on my own by using this reference sheet in the future. I hope this video serves to help someone, and I'd love to see any and all references made using it. Until then, keep on creating, and remember, stay sweet.